We all know what echo is. It's what we hear in a big cold room. Hello, hello, hello. When we speak, the sound of our voices travels directly through the air, but some even passes through our skulls on the way to the ears. This is what we call cytone in telecom context. Even though our sensitivity to this sound is extremely low, it's very important for us since we need to hear ourselves, to be able to speak in a natural tone. The sound of our voices also goes out into the room, bouncing against walls until returning to our ears. This sound will be slightly delayed. This is something the human ear is very sensitive to, even at extremely low sound levels. The longer it takes for the sound to return, the more we will notice it, and the more disturbing it will be. This is naturally something to be avoided during conference calls. But when echoes occur, they can be in two different forms. One is line echo, which is caused by crosstalk in cabling or converters. It doesn't take much for this to be very disturbing. It's enough with less than 1% of the sound coming back to cause problems. In digital environment, this problem can be rather large, since the sound passes through several converters. Each conversion takes time and consequently increases the risk for perceived echoes. When the sound later comes out in the room, there is additional echo. This is called acoustic or spatial echo. The solution to this is echo cancelling. Both through line echo cancelling to remove line echo and through acoustic echo cancelling, which removes echoing caused by its room's configuration and general acoustics. This is the process that represents the most difficult challenge. And it's here the focus must be placed in attaining optimal echo cancelling. From purely practical standpoint, echo cancelling works by a device learning the echo and creating a counterface sound to override it.